What do you do when you need to shut off the servers for the world's most popular video game? You grab an axe and start swinging. Welcome to Nerdy for 30, the podcast where comedian Tim Keck and I nerd out about things that we have watched recently. My name is Kevin Bauer. Today we're going to be talking about the movie Free Guy, starring Ryan Reynolds. Tim, what'd you think? I would never take an axe to this server because I don't destroy beautiful things, Kevin. And this was... (laughs) <laughs> a uh, a fantastic movie that I really enjoy. I don't know if it was fantastic. This is exactly what I knew it was going to be. This is going to be a fun movie and like an un-OK fun movie. And it was. I thought it was fun. I had a good time watching it. I enjoyed it. The bit's fun. I'm excited by the whole video game like action movie premise. It, it like pairs perfectly. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is fun. It's like kind of overly complicated, but it all kind of made sense to me. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. It's incredible that anything in this movie made sense to you because (laughs) this is the most nonsensical fucking movie. The scene where Taika Waititi takes an axe to the servers is a perfect illustration of how they just kind of make everything work based on the logic that they want it to work on, not how any of these things would actually work. Wait, so servers don't work that way? If you like physically destroy a server, it wouldn't like take down the thing because I've worked at companies where like all of our stuff is on a server and we physically had to like move the server and it's like a whole thing like the idea that an entire program revolves on like one central hub i don't think is like an insane idea the idea that this video game is as popular as it is and this one room contains all of the information about the video game is fucking insane do you realize how many fail safes fortnite has just to make sure that if there's like yeah like a flood in whatever facility they have their main servers in the entire code for the game isn't just lost to the world this dude is acting like if he gets rid of like a couple of the servers in this room it's gonna cover up his theft of the source code for the protagonists. I I mean, this shit is backed up a million billion times. Maybe that's why it's not backed up, though. Maybe that's why it's not backed up is because he stole this code and he knows he stole it and he doesn't want to it. He doesn't want it out of his sight. I mean, this is all in like a protective facility in his building. It's in a skyscraper like an act of God would be necessary to like destroy every single server and that you'd have to destroy the building in order to destroy the server. Let me tell you something, man. Yeah. If okay, so this company that Taika Waititi runs, this game company he runs is called Tsunami. If this is really how their data policy is governed, he is criminally negligent to all of the shareholders in this company that their main source of income is that easily destroyed. That is insane, man. There's I, I mean, look, I'm, I'm picking this for one very small scene in the movie, but I think it does kind of illustrate the greater theme that this movie has. And the reason I didn't really like this movie is just that it's very. It, it pays surface level attention to some of these concepts around video games, you know, uh, I guess the world of gaming, massively multiplayer online games, things like Fortnite, all that kind of shit. It pays very surface level attention to it. Um, and. I just feel like if you're going to make a movie like this, if you're going to involve Twitch streamers, if you're going to try to make this thing a love letter to fans of these video games, you have to go deeper because it's going to read that this is a surface level thing. You can't just like, I mean, it's so fucking shallow. You can't just show a mega buster for Mega Man and get by on the goodwill of like, oh my God, they must love video games as much as I do. That was from Mega Man. Like fucking yeah, Mega Man's one of the biggest video games of all time. If we see a scorpion tank from Halo, we get it. You've also played Halo. Like it's it is frustrating to me that so much of this movie didn't go beyond those surface level mentions and that there was so much like techno babble and I don't know, no real depth into any of that world. Wait, so you don't like the fact that he uses the Mega Man cannon? I was okay with that moment, but it kind of feels like It felt like I've only seen like 20 minutes of Ready Player One, but it kind of felt like Ready Player One where they're just referencing a lot of things for the sake of referencing things. And it's not novel when I mean, what they're displaying there is just how Fortnite normally works, but they're still conveying it in this movie in a context so as to make it seem impressive that they were able to license Mega Man to appear in this movie. You know what I mean? 
I guess. I mean, if you haven't seen Ready Player One, I mean, we were I was arguing with the people we saw this movie with that, like, I did not love Ready Player One because it had, I thought, just kind of gaping plot hole moments or just moments that I thought were like so lame that the entire story revolved around. So maybe we got to do a Ready Player One pod. But like Ready Player One felt to me like the new Space Jam movie where they're just like throwing IP in there, you know, and this exactly this. I kind of like the idea that they're just they just pull out a Mega Man. It didn't seem like a crazy thing. It felt to me like he used the Mega Man cannon like the way he would have used just a gun, which I think is like the fun thing about these action movies, right? Is like we've created a world where our action hero can reach behind his back and just pull out a rocket launcher. He can just pull out a machine gun. He can, he just happens to pull out the portal gun. He just happens to pull out the Mega Man cannon at the end. And like the final fight scene, that's where we started to get like the corny moments of like Captain America shield, uh, the Hulk fist, a lightsaber, like people losing their minds over the lightsaber. I'm like, that's stupid. Why are they why are they freaking out about this? Like, I would be way more excited about this movie if they were playing all of those things like they just happened to be there. You know, exactly. If he just had, which, which I feel like the Mega Man example, I feel like is the is like the the one that I don't buy from you from you, which is I'm like, I don't think that was a big deal when he pulled it out and he shot somebody. I was like, oh, that's cool. It's the Mega Man gun. But they didn't have somebody standing there going, whoa, that's the Mega Man gun like they did for the lightsaber. When they brought out the lightsaber, they 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 took 30 seconds for everyone to be like, wow, a lightsaber. Wow. A lightsaber. Wow. A lightsaber. And it's like that. That's like we get it that's so dumb that moment is exactly what i hate i don't think that was the whole movie though that was specifically one fight scene where they're doing that i think it was a look i mean so this is made by one of the dudes behind stranger things and it's one of my biggest gripes with stranger things too is that it's set in the 80s and they do this thing with it where it's like check it out it's the 80s you're not gonna believe this it's a mall in the 80s like a stranger things yeah it's just, it's, it's, oh, you don't like stranger things. I like stranger things, but I have an issue with the way that they are, um, the way that they do the throwback stuff. Again, I'm, I think we're on the same page with it. Where it's like, just fucking do it. Just fucking be in the eighties. Don't do like a crazy, like zoom in yeah. on a fucking like orange Julius or whatever. I think we feel the same. I think we have different triggers for this, though, because I think Stranger Things, I was like Stranger Things. I was like, I watched it perfectly fine. Captain Marvel. I'm like, oh, we get it. You know, like, right. Because Captain Marvel does that same shit. It's like, look, the 90s. Check it out. It's a blockbuster because 90s. I feel like Stranger Things like handles it pretty well. Like maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I need to rewatch Stranger Things. But I maybe the maybe the first season's more like that, too. But the later seasons, I don't feel like they're like, oh, my God, a blockbuster or whatever. Like, I don't know. They're not harping on stuff. I didn't I didn't this line. This movie didn't personally cross that line for me until the final fight scene, which they simultaneously like didn't give us enough and like gave us to like seeing a lightsaber in a movie doesn't do anything for me. Like I don't get excited when I see him pull out a lightsaber. I feel nothing. Yeah. It would have been cool if he'd pulled out a lightsaber, like cut the guy, drop the lightsaber, pulled out the sword from halo, cut the guy with that, like pulled out the hammer from donkey Kong done that. Like that's what I want to see. I want to see the barrage of him utilizing all of these weapons in a fun combination that I've never seen before. Even using Captain America shield and the Hulk fist like Captain America shield. And then let's see him with his other hand, like doing something cooler. Like I'm trying to think of like a cool punch in a game. Falcon punch, man. Falcon do punch. Falcon oh, he punch. does the shield and then he goes, Falcon punch. Then that I would have lost been, my shit. Oh my God. I would have lost my shit if that happened, actually. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, but that's the shit we want to see. more original. It's just, I'm, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed by IP anymore. I get no. it. Like, that's, it's, that maybe is going to be one of the things that people reference when we talk about eras of movies. And like how 80s, the 80s are such a distinct era of movies, like action movies in the 80s all kind of look and move in the same way. And there's these bigger trends of 80s movies that help them stand out as 80s movies. I think IP vomit might be one of the things for the 2010s. Just like, look at how many movies are just dumping on like, see, it's all the things you've heard about, but we put them all in this movie. Fucking Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph breaks the internet. Um... Ready Player One, uh, Space Jam, A New Legacy. 
there's another one that I'm forgetting. I, there's so many of these movies that just the whole point is look at all the IP we were able to purchase and put in the same movie. It's just not impressive. It's not surprising. Yeah, like like you're saying, like IP is not impressive. What would be exciting to me is IP like mixing, like cross pollinating, right? Like if I saw, I don't know, somebody use a lightsaber to knock a green turtle shell at somebody like that would get me more excited than like just seeing the thing. Just a lightsaber. Who cares? He hits the guy with it and it doesn't even cut his arm off. So like there's no point in the lightsaber. It's a stick. It's a kendo stick. It's a WWE weapon. It's not a real lightsaber. Like, who cares? Why are we excited about this? But like, you're right. If I if he had the Mega Man cannon in one hand, the lightsaber in another, and then like had the shield on his back, like that's the kind of IP mixing and mashing where I'm like, oh, this is a video game because that's what people do in video games when they have these cool weapons. They're like trying to mix it up, come up with cool combos like that. I think we're agreed on. Even if they had done that, it would have been a better way to do it. But I think the movie still would maybe stand on its own better if they just didn't do any of that shit at all. Um, I'm just kind of I think it would have been a lot more fun if they just let it be its own thing. Oh, the other movie I was trying to think of was the Lego movie. Um, I think it would have been more impressive if they just let it do its own thing and be its own video game. We get it. We don't need to see a lot of other direct references to video games like we get it. We get the rules of, you know, he's in a video game and it's a first person shooter. And some people have a bunch of guns and stuff. I don't know that I need to see it explicitly have references to other movies. It seems to weaken movies for me now when it's like you couldn't stand out on your own just by having this exist in its own world. And I think you're probably in the minority there. Like, I think the average movie going audience like just they want they like seeing Captain America shield. I think people would like that. I think people like seeing the Mega Man canon. Maybe I am in the minority there, but I think it's condescending to fans because I I don't understand how there's an entire industry around like a T-shirt where it says Pokemon in the Rick and Morty title font. And people are like, holy shit, I got to get that. That's two things I love at the same time. Like it feels fucking condescending, condescending. It feels predatory. It's like they just know that these are two things that you already spend money on. And so if they give it to you in a new way, you're going to continue spending money on it. That is a cheap way to entertain people and to get people's money compared to creating something new that they can be similarly passionate about. I mean, I'll tell you what, I want that shirt. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> is that out there? Can I get it? You got a link? Send it my way. Jesus Christ. I love Rick and Morty. Pokemon's fun. <laughs> You're a monster. They could build the whole world from scratch. I guess they could. I mean, they do a lot of stuff, but isn't the kind of the whole thing that he's like an NPC in a game that we've like played before? Like, I don't know. I'm not going to hold it against them that they want to use this stuff. I think at certain points they beat us over the head with the IP, but like, I, I don't know. I didn't I didn't hate it. I mean, what do you think about the rest of the movie? Did you like Ryan Reynolds? I mean, was that was that like the whole deterrent for you or were there other things about this movie that you were like not crazy about? I found Ryan Reynolds, you know, consistently charming as he is. He didn't rub me the wrong way. I didn't find him obnoxious, but I definitely didn't think he had like as high of a hit rate in this movie with making me laugh as he normally does. Honestly, I think this movie only made me laugh like it made me laugh hard once with the Chris Evans cameo. And then it made me like chuckle maybe like two or three other times cameo. So you're you're an IP simp, dude. You love IP. You're laughing at Chris Evans showing up with the Captain America shield and you're saying, oh, no, we can't have Captain America in this. Oh, come on, you hypocrite. I will not sit here and let you call me a hypocrite for the one fun character moment that they got out of IP. (laughs) I'm just saying you've been you bashed it for the first 10 minutes of this podcast. And then your favorite mo- moment in the movie is an IP moment. It's different. It's definitely different. OK, I different. think if you do, because that one we didn't know when that cameo happened, that it was about to be followed by one of the worst things I've ever seen in a movie, which is the lightsaber scene. It was so we get the scene where the Captain America shield comes out. They play the Avengers theme. They show Chris Evans. I thought that was fun because they actually went above and beyond and showed Chris Evans, the actor. And so it's a little bit of a meta commentary on the stuff itself by having the actor himself not playing. You know, we got Captain America to be here and he's voiced by Chris Evans. They showed Chris Evans as Chris Evans. It's a bending. It's a flex of the entire concept of having IP in something. And that I really appreciated. But the lightsaber, 
is the antithesis. It's everything I hate about this shit where it's like you, as soon as you have something where a character pulls out a lightsaber, when we've already established that this is a video game that contains items from other like nerdy intellectual property. When you have a character pull out a lightsaber and you get five separate cutaways of people going, is that a lightsaber? You undermine the entire reality you've created because of course they would, they know it's a fucking lightsaber. No one's going to say, is that a lightsaber? That is the people commenting on how cool they think it is that they were able to license a lightsaber to be in this movie. And it just makes me cringe until my shoulders hit my forehead. The, I'm, like, I'm with you on the lightsaber oh. thing. I'm with you on the lightsaber thing, but the first one you brought up was Mega Man and there's no difference between Mega Man and Captain America's shield there definitely is because the Mega Man item they don't draw they still they don't draw, draw too attention much to attention it. to it they draw a little bit too much attention to it Ugh, they don't play the theme they don't play the theme but playing the theme for the Captain America shield plays differently sets up the Chris Evans aspect of it but it's still like holy shit he pulled out the shield I can't believe we were able to secure the shield it's less of a moment of holy shit. We, it, there's it's a way I think better than the lightsaber, it's but it's the same thing as better. the lightsaber. I it's think the there's idea. something about, there's something about the way the shield shows up that points to a better way to do any of these nerd references in these movies. And, uh, even though it maybe doesn't get a hundred percent there, it's a hundred percent better than any other time they do any kind of a nerdy IP reference. You're saying it has to be meta. It's, it has to be meta. It has to be nodding and winking at us or you don't like it. No, I'm saying that it has to be well thought out and there has to be some kind of a payoff for the moment that is beyond just isn't this cool. We got something from a video game in a movie about a video game. Agree to disagree. I think if you just want to pull out a, a Mega Man cannon and shoot a bad guy, I think that's perfectly cool. And I would like that. I want more of that. I want them just doing it. Like, just do the thing. They pull out the gliders from like, uh, uh, um, what you call it? Fortnite. Fortnite. They pull out a Fortnite glider. I'm like, that's awesome. They didn't like go, oh my God, hey, here's the Fortnite glider. They just did it. And I'm like, that's awesome. I want that. I want all of that. I want to just see them oh do the things. God. I think it's fun. It's cool. Like, why not? I mean, I put it in the why not category. It doesn't destroy anything for me. Having, I mean, there were moments in this movie, like the lightsaber thing that are just like felt very condescending. I mean, I thought this was a PG 13 movie and it, it felt like a children's movie. There were moments where they're just like beating us over the head with like the same, like repetitive stuff. And like, Oh my, I don't know. I, the moment, this is maybe my biggest beef is, uh, the moment in the very end where it's Jody Comer realizes that, uh, what's the just name? Joe Keely has been into her the whole time. Yeah. And the entire audience is ahead of the movie. We all get it. We saw the scene already where he said that he based guy's interests off of Jody. Jody realizes that Joe is into her and then they replay the fucking clip of him saying that he designed guy to share her same interests. We know they don't replay it. It's a new clip. I was, I was thinking about that because he says I based it in the first one. He's like, I based it off the person I was sitting next to. Right. And he describes her and then in the new, and then she watches a different clip where he's saying, I based it off of you. Like the love of my, the lost love of my life. So there's like multiple clips of him telling us the thing that we all know because we're not fucking idiots. So, well, so also, like, she, when we see the clip the first time, so it's a longer version of the clip at the end. When we see the f- clip the first time, it's not even a longer, it's a different clip. I'm telling you, it's a different clip because the dude, dialogue is longer. completely different. The dialogue's different. They don't even get to the same parts. In this, in the last one, he's like, I love you. And in the first one, he's like, I based it off of the person next to you. He's like playing it cool. What I'm confused by, though, is she watches the clip earlier in the movie. And when we see it at the end of the movie, it's a longer clip. So she would have watched the entire thing. It was like an important, important information was being passed to her in this video clip. She's not going to watch part of it. She needs to know the important information. So it's frustrating to think that she would have shut that off before he gets the part where he says, I love you. It's just it's so. She, oh, yeah. She did shut it off before. So it's just it's you're saying it's one law. It is one log clip, but we don't. But she doesn't. Yeah, she just restart. She just continues the clip. Basically, you're right. It's the same clip, but we see the second half. It's awful. It's an awful moment. I mean, yeah, I mean, at the end of the movie, I'm like, she's the biggest villain in this thing. Like, you know, 
It seems not that she not that she like is re- anyone is required to return love that is given to them. But the idea like of like, no, I mean, I don't, I don't think you're forced to do anything you don't want to do. But to not recognize that this guy is like throwing himself at you seems like insane to me. Like to not recognize that like a video game that stole your design has like bubblegum ice cream for you. It's like the whole thing is like. It's just so obvious. And the fact that she doesn't get it, I'm like, this is crazy. This is insane. And then she's like, so blowing off this guy. It's like, I don't know. And then she's like talking to him about how she hasn't been on a good date in years. She's like talking about how evil men are while this like awesome, like very nice guy who like she clearly has great chemistry with and like really treats her right and respects her is like standing right there. It's just like, you know, like an incels like dream. (laughs) It's like what what incels think all women are. (laughs) I'm just like, I don't know. Oh, my God. It's well, it's absolutely the situation that all guys who are like, I'm a nice guy. I don't understand why people don't like me. That's the exact situation. They all think that they're in when really in real life, they're all just being fucking monsters to women. Um, Yeah. The uh, it's I, I mean, it's all it's all PG movie logic. So much of this relies on PG movie logic where I don't know what the age group is for this movie. But I do think that if you showed this movie to a 12 year old, they would still think that it was too dumbed down for them. I'm curious. Maybe kids need this. Like, I don't know. Did we need things just like explained to us like this? Or are you really is anyone really watching this movie and being like surprised at the end when the girl is surprised? Like we're all I feel like we're all watching this movie, like waiting for uh, Killing Eve to catch up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just and they're like, yeah. OK, anytime now. And every other character in the movie is like. Sorry, man, like keep trying to get her coffee. It's just like, I don't know. It just seems like a crazy. It just seems like an insane relationship to me. Like, I don't know. Such a weirdly negative relationship. You mentioned Killing Eve and my the the best thing to come out of this movie is the fact that Jodie Comer probably made a lot of money that she deserved to be paid for Killing Eve and probably wasn't. Dude, I'm going to watch Killing Eve now. She's she's a thief for me, for sure. Speaking of thieves, let's get into some categories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. I already did my beef. Okay, Kevin, do you have a when did you know? When did you know that Taika Waititi didn't read the script and just came in and said whatever he wanted to say? (laughs) That's 100 percent what happened. What you talking about, Willis, is 100 percent an improvised line that he did not know was going to be in the movie. Like he's just going 100. Uh, (laughs) I mean, I'll be honest. I had a couple. When did you know drafts? And mine was when did you know you wanted to be best friends with Tika Watiti? <laughs> like this. Guy. Oh no! <laughs> I hated it. Look, I love Taika. I love the stuff that he's done. I love his movies and stuff. He was way over the top in this movie for me. Oh, he is crazy in this movie. It's too much. But this performance made me think Taika's a cool guy. I was like, oh, this no. guy's awesome. I was like, he just showed up and he's just improvising stuff and he's just like giving them whatever they want and like going crazy. And like, I just feel like he was fun to have on set. I, w- I would love to do something with Tiger. I was like, these other actors must be having a great time in this. Like I, as an audience member, I'm not necessarily having a great time, but his performance I thought was like, Tyka's having fun. Like the cast is having fun. Like I, I just, for some reason watching him, I was like, this, this set has to be fun. They're having a great time with Tyka on set. Oh, man. Am I crazy? Am I completely off there? I think you're probably most people are probably aligned with you on this one. This one kind of made me wonder. Look, again, he seems like a great dude. I would love to hang out with him. Uh, This his performance in this movie made me think maybe he got a little too big because it seems like his performance in this seems completely out of touch with his comedic sensibilities. But they seem to be in all of his other projects, which are a lot more reserved and restrained and in this he seemed like he was playing a Jim Carrey character I mean this was like so over the top the closest thing I've seen to his performance in this movie was Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik in Sonic the Hedgehog no I maybe I don't know I don't think so I liked it I thought it was cool I thought it's what he was asked to do I mean that's definitely what they wanted him to do it's 100 yeah, it's wanted probably what do. he was asked to do but I vehemently disagree with most of the creative decisions made in this movie there's moments like when he just sits down on the floor and starts thinking where I'm like, I get this. This is just an eccentric guy. This is an eccentric, self-centered asshole. And the idea of him needing to solve a problem and just sitting on the floor of this cubicle is funny. Him like yelling at all the people being like, do it, drop guy in. And they're all like, OK, well, we're about to get fired. It's not even done. And he's like, I don't care. Just do it. I'm just like, I get it. I thought he was, I thought he was fun. I don't know. It made me like Taika. I, I just want more Taika. I think he's great. He's just a cool dude. I want to be friends with him. 
I wish I knew him or knew somebody who knew him so that I could stalk them and, you know, get close to Taika. Hey, same here. I just want to see the next Thor movie. I just, he just, I don't know. He just seems like a great hang. Uh, beefs. You already hit your beef. My biggest beef in this, my biggest beef in this is maybe dumb, but I'm, I don't buy these movies where the entire world revolves around a video game. Like we're shown Mm. noodle shops on the other side of the globe and families are sitting there watching a tiny TV playing this video game. It's insane. We're watching third world countries where they have like one antenna TV and they're obsessed with this video game. It's it's crazy. It's stupid. Why does it have to be that? I don't know. People do concerts on Fortnite and it's a big deal. And like Fortnite is something that every kid in middle school, elementary school now is doing. If something like this happened in Fortnite, it would be a big deal to a specific demographic. Why does it need a big to be a big deal to everybody? Why does it need to be on Good Morning America? It's so lame. It was so weird. They did like GMA or whatever. I was like, this is a Good Morning America segment. It's stupid. I I also felt like really embarrassed as a person watching this and there's Twitch streamers showing up. Yeah. The Twitch streamers showing up is so lame, but even that is better than Good Morning America because Good Morning America makes zero sense. Twitch streamers talking about this makes sense. Like, let's yeah. cut out these sh- these shots of the noodle shop. Like, that's that's dumb. It doesn't make any sense. Let's get more shots of these Twitch streamers, I guess. Like, I even hate that part, but that's the part that people are going to. That's the more realistic thing for sure. Dude, the Twitch streamers, the fact that they had there were moments in this movie where I guess like exposition was delivered by Twitch streamers talking about shit, but it seemed to be out of order. Like at no point there were things that happened. There had to be cuts that were made because at no point did we establish that the Twitch streamers knew that guy was an NPC instead of a player. And yet they're all talking about like, wait a minute, what's going on? This NPC has decided to be a good guy. But like 10 minutes earlier in the movie, they were all talking about how this dude playing the game is playing as a good guy. And it's crazy. Like they continued to be surprised by the same thing a little bit later. It was really frustrating. I also would, would anybody notice if a guy leveled up fast? Like, Again, it seems to be a complete misunderstanding of how fucking video games work. Like, I'm shocked that all these Twitch, uh, they were there for a paycheck, but I'm shocked that all these Twitch streamers weren't like, hey, this is not how any of this shit works at all. Yeah, they're not movie makers. I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure any of these people are like, you know, super creative people. I mean, they're just talking about a video game all day, I guess. What kind of a person would build a whole like media around talking about somebody else's creation you know that just seems like an ignorant thing to do you know like just sitting in front of a microphone and monologuing about something that somebody else created like just make your own art you know it's conceited to think that anybody would listen to it who would listen to that shit who would listen to it why would you listen to it i mean other than like friends and immediately immediate family seems like an absurd uh, pompous thing to do even friends and immediate family i think it says more about them the listener than it does about the people <laughs> creating the reaction pod <laughs> and i think they should right be now. ashamed of themselves reaction pod okay that's a great um, slip so uh let's get into uh let's get into thieves what was your thief for the movie tim my thief is just the video game action movie idea i think it's great i think it's cool i think it's super fun i mean we've argued about the ip but the idea of an action movie taking place in a world where like almost anything is possible and you're able to create action scenes where a car is driving up a ramp while buildings are collapsing on it. Awesome. Mm-hmm. You're able to create an action scene where you ride a motorcycle out of a thing, jump into a hand glider. Awesome. You're able to create fight scenes where you're pulling out a Mega Man cannon, pulling out a machine gun, pulling out a grenade launcher, whatever it is. Like, if anything, I want more of that. I want more of the rapid switching. I want more of the rotating through weapons. I want the like, it seems like an amplification of what the Matrix did, right? Like, we're in a room. There's Mm -hmm. infinite weapons. We can grab whatever. It's like the next level of that. And I think that idea, I don't think we've seen the end of it. And I'm going to be excited about whatever the next action movie is that takes place in a world like that. Yeah, I thought that was great. It's baked into the premise that you're allowed to have an action scene whenever you want. And that's, yes. that's so cool. And I can't believe, again, can't believe they didn't do more of that. 
Nice. Uh, my thief, honestly, is probably so we saw this movie with our friends Breen and Spencer. Uh, and after we saw this movie yesterday, we all went back to Spencer's place and he cooked us this pasta dish. And that pasta dish is my thief. It was amazing. It was like orichetti pasta with some kind of like a cheese sauce and then crispy sausages and butternut squash. So fucking good. Best part of this movie by far. Ugh. whatever, Kevin. Oh, my God. There's really nothing you liked about this. I'm shocked. Probably like the I will probably go with you on like the spectacle and the effects and stuff. I It was just really well done. I think that the everything, all of the like all of the video game effects they did in this movie looked fucking incredible. All of the special effects. This should be nominated for an Oscar for the effects. It was amazing. Yeah, how it good won't it be. Looked. It won't be. But you're right. This is the kind of shit that like would have blown somebody's mind you know, 20 years ago. This is stuff that we never yeah. would have imagined. This is Avatar. <laughs> and it all looks it fucking remarkable. amazing. It looks so good. There's shots of Ryan Reynolds just walking down the street and things are blowing up behind him. And they all look so good. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. It, it's the visuals are awesome. The pasta, the pasta was very good. I'm definitely going to be exploring butternut scotch. Uh, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to be exploring butternut squash a little bit more in my regular diet because sure. that was a game changer for me. I've never had, had anything like that. So I agree with you there, but yeah, the aesthetic of these video games is action movies is, is super cool. I got to pick one for you too, Tim. While we're at it. We got a great brand new category. We're workshop and pick one. Kevin, you got to pick one for me. Yes. So I'm going to give Tim two options and he gets to pick only one of the options uh, to make this a movie that he would rather watch. So we get a lot of mentions in this movie of Free City 2. The video game that we are seeing Ryan Reynolds in is called Free City. And there's this looming threat of them launching Free City 2, which would then erase everything for Free City 1. They never actually pay that off. The finale of this movie where stuff is getting destroyed isn't Free City 2 launching and destroying Free City 1 as everything in the script seems to have made it uh, indicative that it should have been. I think most early drafts of this movie, that's probably what ended up happening. Instead, the world is disappearing because Taika Waititi is taking an axe to the servers. We never get any payoff on the Free City 2 idea. When they had shown it as this crazy like post-apocalyptic sh- like shooter that I think would have taken place in the ruins of Free City. It seemed like it was going to be really cool. And instead, they just focused on more uh, IP plugs. So, Tim, my choice for you is. Do we see Free City 2 as the climax of this movie or do we drop all mentions of Free City 2 altogether? I, I think you're really on to something here. My jaw dropped when you were saying that, honestly. I think. I mean, I'm, I'm going with the launch of of the next game. I think that's great. I think, I think you can replace all of the server beef that you have. You replace the server room with the launch of the new game. 100%. We're going to want, we're going to launch it tomorrow. No, screw that. We're launching it now. And they press the yep. button and the world starts collapsing around them. The problem is it doesn't actually give Tico Watiti a physical thing to do. So that's, I'm sure why they decide to do the server attack thing. But As far as the story in the game, which is, I think, probably the more compelling of the stories is like what Ryan Reynolds is doing. I mean, that's awesome. The idea of the game, the new game showing up because then you've got new characters like showing up and like doing all this stuff. And man, that'd be crazy. What if the new characters start showing up and killing the NPCs or something like our NPCs? Even dude, even the launch of dude, the roided out version of guy is made better if he's just the free city two version of and he's not ready NPC. yet you can do all the same yeah. jokes he's not he's not fully built he's not finished because the prototype they, i mean it's super glitchy i mean that's the thing we heard about is that the they're like oh my god it's not ready yet though we still need to make final touches he just launches it anyway and they're introducing like half i mean then you've got some weird stuff with like mutated npcs like rolling in there that are like half baked and then you can have them all living together in utopia excuse me in this like new world you can have like all of the you can have the old npcs and the new npcs all living together in harmony dude that's great that's a killer move Huge that's a great pick one dude this is, a, this is a great category i'm really proud of us for coming up with this hey me too man i got one for you i think this is pretty good maybe this is good 
No, you know what? Screw it. I'm confident in myself. This is going to be a good category, Kevin. Pick one. At the end of the movie, the developers brought back Lil Ray to be Ryan Reynolds' friend. Mm -hmm. Pick one. We keep it like it is. We bring back Lil Ray. Or instead of Lil Ray, we bring back or we create a new love letter from Killing Eve to the Stranger Things guy to be the romantic interest for Ryan Reynolds, which is where I 100% thought this movie was going. I thought for sure if Ryan Reynolds is a love letter to Jodie Comer, then 100% we're going to get her as an NPC back in the game as a love letter to Joe Keery. I'm going to immediately violate the premise of our new category <laughs> because I think this can be one and the same. I think the rebooted Lil Ray can be the perfect companion for guy because it seems like that was their thing is their friendship was like kind of like his real his quote unquote romance was a bromance and uh i think that has a lot more payoff than the idea of like he has to have a new romantic companion i also get it i i can see where that would work and it would seem to have been a better bow on the story because we get the kind of breakup scene between jody cummer and guy but I think it is a missed opportunity to have Lil Ray reboot and have a moment where it's like, what do you want to do? And Lil Ray's like, you want to get some bubblegum ice cream? And have Guy be like, I love bubblegum ice cream. Something like that. Just one of those same connections they used to have. Yeah, but they were already doing that stuff. And it felt to me like Ryan Reynolds was missing the romantic connection. Like he wants to kiss this girl. He wants to take her on dates. He wants to ride these swings with her. Like he can do that with his boys, but it's not the same. Like this is a man who's constantly pining for a love interest. And he ends the movie without one. And he ends the movie potentially never getting one. And that just seems like kind of a bummer ending to me. Like his whole character is motivated around his love for this person. And then he realizes he's fake. And then all of a sudden the love's gone. And he's like, no, you go. I'm a, I'm a program. Like I got to bounce. I'm good with my boys. And it's like, I don't know. I guess maybe he's just, a. I mean, maybe at the end of the day, it's just, he's a computer program and like, who cares? But if he's really an AI that's evolving and like falling in love and like wants romance, like not giving him romance at the end just feels like a little bit of a bummer to me. I was like a little sad. I knew they weren't going to end up together, but creating her as an NPC would have definitely solved all those problems. And I guess I'm saying that I, I definitely don't think this movie would ever do this in a million years, but I'm saying that like, even it can even not be a bromance. It can still be Lil Ray. You can realize that Lil Ray has been the person that's been there for him the whole time and everything that he's been missing. Like that can be the romance. Yeah, I guess it could. It could be. Yeah. I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> it just seems like, I mean, maybe. I mean, I guess then we're mapping the same relationship on with her and Joe Keery, where like he's this like friend who's just always been there and like he never realized that he was in love with each other. Like, mm -hmm. I just think there's a fun purity in like a bromance. There's like something awesome about like, I don't know, two guys who are like vulnerable around each other that adding a romantic element to that, like maybe bums me out a little bit. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about well, that's that. That's one of those things too, where it's like, it doesn't need a romance subplot. Like, I don't think, I don't think every movie needs a romance subplot. I guess so. Maybe I'm just a romantic, Kevin. That's what we learned from pick one today is that I'm just a hopeless romantic. I want Ryan Reynolds to be happy. Uh, even in these fictional realities where he's playing a character, Kevin, final thoughts on this movie. From everything I saw in the trailers, from everything I saw from Ryan Reynolds promoting this movie on Instagram, I really thought this movie was going to have a lot more depth and respect for the idea of video games and the culture of video games and even the promotional posters and stuff that they released for this riffing on uh, like famous video game uh, covers. I, I really, truly thought that this was going to show more love and a greater breadth and depth of knowledge for games than it actually ended up doing. I was very disappointed. Uh, I went into this movie really wanting to like it really wanting to like it, really expecting I was going to like it. And I just, it just never hooked me. So final word, not for me. I'm going to agree to disagree. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I think I'm not a big game. I'm not a big gamer person. So I didn't feel that same responsibility that this movie had, I guess. This is exactly what I thought it was, where you just kind of turn off your brain and you just have a fun time and you see cool stuff and you get to spend time with characters you like. And it was definitely a little condescending. 
the there's it's a kind of a very complicated story where you're invested in Ryan Reynolds, who's a video game, but there's a whole battle taking place outside of the video game. I think they did a pretty good job of I mean, it didn't feel overwhelming at any times. It never felt too complicated. So I, I thought it was a good it's a good relaxing movie, man. If you just want to chill and have like a fun time goofing off in a low stakes movie that you don't have to overthink yourself. <laughs> So <laughs> I mean, I enjoy it. Just have fun watching Ryan Reynolds do some cool video game stuff like it's cool. And the love story I liked and I liked it. I dug it. It was just a fun time. But uh, agree to disagree. Hey, let us know what you thought. Listeners, enjoy it. Not sure what we're doing for our next movie. We're going to figure that one out and we'll get back to you on that. Uh, but thanks so much for listening, guys. We had a we had a great time. I had a great time. Yeah. Kev. Me nice. Too. Thanks for listening, everybody. Stay nerdy. Woo! Woo! Is that what we're doing? Stay nerdy? We're sticking with that? Yeah, I think stay nerdy. I, we okay. can cut the woos out, though. Stay nerdy. Woo! <laughs>